When doing beam problems, what we have is we have a beam and it has several forces applied to it. So we've got supports here. We're going to have 10 kilonewtons applied at 0.5 meters. Then we're going to have another 30 kilonewtons applied at, what's that going to be, 2.5 meters. And this support is 4 meters away. And what we're going to do is we want to find out what the maximum stress on that beam is. So the first, usually we, what we're going to do is we're going to find out, to find out the maximum stress, we have to know what the maximum bending moment is, how much moment is. So there's three steps to doing this. There's one, draw a free body diagram. And that's what we'll do in this first clip. Then two, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the shear force diagram. Force. Diagram. And then three, we're going to do the bending moment diagram. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them all together in clips four and five when we get to a couple of examples. So the first question is, what is a free body diagram? And the simplest way to do a free body diagram is we just think of whatever it is is floating free in space. So what we have here is we have a beam. And I imagine it's floating free on space. And what we have to do now is we add the forces. So we know here there's 10 kilonewtons acting here. And we know at this point there's 30 kilonewtons. So those we draw in the two forces. But we also know there's two other forces acting here. One at this support, one at that support. So we imagine this is floating free through space. And the only thing affecting this is the forces. Now we know for a static system, and that beam is sitting there, sum of forces equals zero, sum of moments equals zero. That's the very definition of a free um, of a static system. So the next question is how can we work out these two forces? And we can do that just by using moments. So let's assume that this point here is our pivot point. So I'm going to find out the moments around this and then I can work out the force on this. So let's call this force left or a relate uh, you call that force left, call that, call that force right. So if we know that the basically what happens here is sum of moments equals zero. I'm sorry. So that means 10 kilonewtons, that force times the distance 0.5 meters plus that force 30 kilonewtons times uh, 2.5 meters plus force right force right times 4 meters equals zero so we can rearrange this. So this is 5 plus 30 times 5 is 75. Um, plus a force right times 4 equals 0. So force right equals 80. That's 5 plus 75 over 4. Uh, we subtract that, so negative 80, so minus 5, minus 4, which is equal to negative 20 kilonewtons. So what that happens, this means is, at this point here, <coughs> pardon, pardon, there is a 20 kilonewton force acting up. And to find the other support force, we can use sum of forces equals zero. So we know the force is down. So we know, let's just try this, we go force, um, force left so my force is equals this one and if we're calling that negative, so that's going to equal 
force left plus 10 kilonewtons plus 30 kilonewtons minus 20 because remember we've said this is the opposite direction that means that's all equal to zero so force left is equal to 10 plus uh, 40 minus 20 so force uh, is going to be force 20 equals zero force left equals negative 20 so this side is also going to equal 20 and what we can do now is we can just check this what we do is we go do the moments do the forces up equal the force down well we've got 40 forces 40 going up we've got 30 10 40 going down and that's going to be our free body diagram our free body diagram is basically our beam floating in space and then we just add up all of determine all the forces on it and if it is a, an equilibrium these forces the up forces must equal the down forces the left forces must equal the right forces Next body, next diagram, we're going to do the shear force diagram of this.